good momentum and I'm going to kind of like take it up a notch and uh, think that's working for myself and help you guys and just give you guys more time because I know there's going to be questions and not have been chasing me down. I can do it as a group. Okay, perfect. Thanks, bud. Well, well you got to close the other door first. It moves. I'm getting water, but I'm listening. I'll be right back. All right, cool. What's going on, Cody? How you doing? How you doing? Good, good to meet you, man. I'm doing good. Thank you. Good to meet you as well. Yeah, congrats, congrats on your MVP and, you know, just got to get those customers out and you did a good job. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Thank you. All right. Set me up for a 5 p.m. meeting. Um, I got to do this part quick. All right. So, Alexis, do you want me to just bounce off of your questions first, and then we'll just record that? And if Danielle can come on, or if she can just text you what she needs, and I can answer it real quick. Um, this is more just for MVPs and above, kind of a bigger scale um, Q and A. Yeah. I. Yeah. I kind of, you know, saw the contests that you were doing and I understand how they work, but, um, and the purpose of them, but I guess, I don't know. I guess I don't know how to like maximize them. Like you were talking about. Sure, 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 sure. Let's, let's go over placement. So first off, how many people are in your placement lounge right now that are movable? Okay. Um, I think everyone's movable except I did move two people before you told us not to move anyone without asking you. Uh, well, well, this is, this is, Hey, we learn it now versus later. Um, so let's go after why did you move in the, in the first place? So I can kind of understand maybe that's something we can address or maybe it's a good placement. So it's a learning yeah. for both of us. So, um, okay. So I ran a little contest and I forget the dates, but it was basically like whoever brings in the most, enrollments, whether it's customers or promoters. Um, I was just going to pick one, but I ended up picking two people because I had a girl who mm -hmm. was really close to MVP and I was just like trying to um, get her to like roll over to that, but it didn't end okay. up that way, but that's fine. So what I ended up doing is picking the top two and I moved one girl who had like her total group volume was like 300 mm -hmm. and I moved her under Heather. Okay. And then the other girl um, was another one of my promoters who is kind of like a, I don't know, not like going, I don't know, kind of like a discount promoter, I guess you'd say, like has a few customers, just a few. And so I put her under because she was like, yeah. So, but at least it was, the placement was based off of production versus like favoritism or I like you, right? Yeah. So, so we're talking about maximizing. So just my, my background, um, my, I used to be an engineer. I retired at the age of 33 and I love uh, efficiency. Like I'm always trying to make things a little bit better. Um, this same system I used in Visalis uh, five years ago and I was the number one team builder in the entire organization and I had zero home parties. And a lot of it came down to running contests. And so if I can help you kind of grasp this idea we can take, you know, five good provers a month and then really kind of blow that out. So in your personal circumstance, I like what you did. And there's a couple of things we can improve upon it. And that's just, you know, over, over some experience, we can do that. So the first question would be, um, do you understand when someone runs for MVP, either your personal MVP promoters or down the line that you cannot give them any volume to hit that rank? No. Did you know that? Okay. So now yeah. this is a good hangout. You cannot because because MVP requires personal and team, which is not group. Okay. You were saying group, it that doesn't even help them at all. It, it helps them in terms of like down the road for another rank, but in terms of MVP run and GoPro run, we as leaders cannot help them do that. They have to earn. That makes sense. We can help them with other ways, but not with volume. Okay, I fell into that same mistake. Um, 
So moving someone who has 300 group volume today in a, in a month, it, it will flush next month, right? So it would be ideal to kind of use that in some form or fashion. But the number one reason you move somebody is the person in your placement lounge is because they would work well with the person you're paying them to or their organization. Okay. Not because of volume. Volume is here today, gone tomorrow. Partnerships is what grows your organization deep, 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 deep. Um, so when you place it to Heather, was it direct or was it someone down Heather's organization? Uh, I think it was direct. I'd have okay. To now let's think about this. So, that, you know. yeah, uh, in Prove It, um, you can hit rank ten with two provers with all your volume. So, will you need it? It just really depends, right? Um, place it directly to Heather isn't a bad choice, right? If this person is friends with Heather, fantastic option. But if there is no relationship, what I would do is take that winning, go to Heather and go, Heather, congratulations, you did a fantastic job. I'm gonna give you one of my promoters instead of giving it to you because you don't even know this person, why would you wanna build underneath it directly? Why not we contest that in your organization? So if she has five provers, maybe seven customers, and let's say half of those customers are thinking about becoming a promoter, you have this, you have to place in her organization regardless. So you turn one person who stepped up, wanted, go into their organization, and then you have five to 10 people who are now trying to get something. Now, I would take the more difficult contest to the leaders first to see who can hit it. Then once you find out Heather is the winner, you then go a much smaller and easier contest. So instead of like say, if you have a vague number, people give you vague results. So instead of saying whoever does the most volume, you go, this is a winning that Heather earned. And instead of her taking the earning, we wanted to see who and her team wanted it. So the first person to bring in three customers, okay. just three customers. Here's what happens. If you had five people, five people who are promoters, they all said they wanted to build a business and you just got them in a group, got them on a hangout with Heather. And you said, I have someone I have to move in here. I'd rather move it under you versus Heather, first person to get three. Let's say one person gets zero, one person gets one, one person gets zero, one person gets three, one person gets five, right? You just like increased your group volume by like 10 customers for one placement. And that's kind of how I place it. So I kind of place it, I kind of do two contests, one that's really big, harder to do in each big leg. And then after that, then I go into a much smaller group and go, hey, here's definitely something you can hit. And let's say no one does it. They only get like one or two customers. You just give it to the person who actually did the most work. And now they just doubled up. Like maybe they had zero promoters. Now they have one for the rest of their life. You, then you introduce them to each other. You build a chat line. You go, hey, look, I'm your top level spicer, sponsor. Here's Heather. Here's you. Here's a new person. And then you start working that as like a, like a team mm -hmm. in, that, in that sense. So what you did was fantastic. It was fine. And I think it was just a matter of learning that you can't pop someone in MVP or GoPro. Um, that volume really is when it's R5 and R6. Really R6. Rank one to five, the only difference is, is how deep you can make 5% commission on your customers from one to five, which is big, but you know, for the first year, it's probably not that big. Um, unless we get really, really big, of course, but like now it's not. But if you can go take someone who's like a rank four to a rank six, rank six is an $800 car note. Like that is a significant bump. So if you have volume you're trying to move, that could be a very good reason to move it to that one person for volume only. And if, they, if their personalities match and whatnot. So that was good. That was good. And so that way, if I teach you this, then people who watch this recording, they could be like, okay, I get it. Don't just place the place. You can't pop someone with volume, with, with group volume. And we're running multiple contests, not the day you need to move it, but weeks prior. Mm -hmm. okay. okay, cool. And then, so like the idea behind that is obviously it increases results and stuff, but then like, and then once people have like one sale or like two sales, it increases their confidence, right? So they're like, mm -hmm. oh, like I can do this. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you've had it when people come and say, I want to make money. I'll, I'll do whatever it takes. And they won't even talk to their best friend about a product that's making them feel good. Like, are you really, because if you're somebody to be a customer, that's fantastic. I love you. You're a fantastic customer. If you're looking to make money, you got to do the hot market. You've got to do an open box. You've got to actually you know, kind of see what you're doing. 
And if they're not, that's when you take their temperature. It's, it's not that you like them the most. It's that they deserve the most attention because they're hustling, they're running, they're doing what they're supposed to do. And you understand this. Yeah. And so your attention is placed on the people who are running, not the people you love the most because it's, it's a business. It's not friendship. It's business. Yeah. So that placement is the largest amount of leverage you have. Every time you recruit, you're thinking, where would this person fit? And then start running contests in that organization. Mm, okay. And the only people you really need to stick on your front line is two to three. Two or three. That's it. Yeah. Okay. I get that. Yeah. Personally, for me, I'm building two. Okay. Because I'll build the third one once I find a really good leader that I want to build that is outside of these groups. So there's not like, oh, they're my best friend. I want to pair, you know, in your organization with your best friends, you know. But yeah. outside of that. So different organizations, maybe that's they don't know each other at all. And then in the end, for my, my one year end, I'm gonna shoot for three legs just to go wide. You wanna go wide for residual because if you have you know, 10 people on your fifth level versus 100 people on your first level or fifth level, it's a lot more compounding percentages for your commission. Yeah, okay. So um, that's, so does your organization, I did a video on how to read your volume for GoPro and GoMVP. Was that crystal, pretty crystal clear? Um, if there's questions on that, I mean, I'm here to help you on that also. Yeah. So, I mean, I understand it completely okay. and I know okay. that it's really easy to read just by hovering over it. So I think yeah. some people, like I didn't grasp this when I first signed up either, but I didn't, but I figured it out and I didn't mm -hmm. like need to know, but I think some people need to know. Yeah. Um, so like, let me, sh let me show you my screen real quick and just simple processes. Um, Bookmarking prove it's number one. <laughs> just just help your team bookmark prove it site and then just go to rewards. On the phone, it works just the fine. It's the same. Same way. You go to rewards and hovering. Just hover over this thing right here, or actually opening it will tell you how much volume you have. Right? Now I've been trying to help you guys shift your smart ships on the 15th or earlier. Because if you're running for R6 or Legend, you kind of want to know your volumes before the last week of the month to kind of really understand what you're short by. So by the 15th of the month, in a couple months, you're hoping you are at least on pace to hit the next rank. And if not, then you have to kind of put things in place to do another, like, you know, a tasting party, maybe go to a different town and hit up some people, some friends. But it gives you an idea where you can go. So this is, I'm at the 14th, I'm at 15. So if I look at R6, if I wanted to requalify, it's 30 grand. So I know right now, even before the majority of my smart ships hit, I'm already halfway. So this is like, to me, it's like coach is clear. I just need to keep building and helping my teams. Um, to help your teams, you need to help them find the next higher rank. I was R6 one star. So my, really, I need to be focusing on this, 60,000. I got a ways to go, right? But... You understand my first full month, I was at zero and I went to like 45,000. So it's totally doable for me to go from here to another 60. It just depends on a lot of it's going to be contesting. A lot of it is. And so helping your team see these two windows, helping your MVP see these windows, helping you see these windows. So if someone goes, I don't know what I need for my GoPro, walk them to your reward, their rewards, have them hit this drop down. And then they just got to see green check marks. That's it. That's probably the easiest way I can verbally teach someone over the phone. And if they go, what is that? They just need to click it. What is this team volume? You click that. It'll show you the customers that, that, that came to that, right? That actually went into to building that out. Um, and you're just looking for check marks each and every time. Yeah. So I think what, um, so let's talk about, I think what confuses some people is what would be an example of like, what does a thousand BV mean or TV? Mean? Yeah. 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 Okay. So awesome. Awesome question. So if you go into your downloads and if the United States, you click on this customer buying guide right here, it's a PDF. You open it. It looks like this right here. Now this one will show you the price of the product. So let's say it's 15, it's a 15 serving of chocolate swirl. It costs 85 bucks. Uh, let's see, cost plus shipping, so 85 bucks, but you get 50 BV. So you're actually concerned with this volume right here. 
So if you can then figure out, okay, 15 servings, about 50 volume, 30 servings, about a hundred. Now, not on sale. If it's on sale, we had someone miss their MVP. Uh, oh no, a pro because their customers bought their products on sale at 20% off. And she was short 20% to her thousand volume because the volumes reflect, it reflects, right? Cause I mean, they didn't pay the full price, right? So $144, 30 day serving, we'll give them a hundred in volume. So that means 10 customers right here, 10 times a hundred is a thousand. You can hit GoPro with 10 customers. Okay. That's just basic, uh, the boat, the BV added to BV added to BV and then have enough customers to do it. Yeah. Yeah. So that's usually the example that I give is like the 10 customers yeah. or yeah. Like people in an experience pack. But so what, what would you say to someone who's like, wow, that's kind of a lot. Well, it's, it's, it's like it, the conversation changes depends on the person. If this is a brand new person to direct sales, I go, well, number one, we're helping you build a business, right? That has the lowest overhead of any business. It's $37 a year. You know what I mean? So if all you did was just sell all of your, your personal experience packs, and you're making a couple hundred bucks, like we're cash flowing you like first week. So if I have a rebuttal that that's kind of a lot, I was like, well, you want to get paid kind of a lot, <laughs> you know? So it's like, we got to get you in a position where you're not in a scarcity mindset, but an abundance mindset. And you can think 10 customers is a lot, but we have people who have way more than that. And if you want to show mine, right? I've been in 45 days. I'm an internet marketer, okay? I, my last business was like 90% make money to make money. There was like very few people who really wanted to learn marketing. They learned it, but I taught them after they joined the business, right? But here, I literally have more customers than I have promoters. So even with my strong focus to having people make money, I still get customers. So it's never an excuse to say that's too much. And then that's because that person's new. Now, if the person's an experienced network marketer, direct salesperson, you're like, this is nothing like in Dallas, 20% of the room had more than 40 per 50 personal customers. We have an interview with someone who was a complete stranger sat next to us who had over a hundred personal customers. This organization is based on customers. Yeah. And if, I mean, just purely on statistics for my last uh, month in the organization, it looks like this. Um, let's see here. We had 135 customers to 26 provers. So it's like, just stay on the customer route. And let's say, they, let's say worst case scenario, your prover does not hit GoPro, but got like six customers. They're making 20% volume on that. And if all you did was help those customers get free product, you're going from like, you know, like a couple hundred bucks a month to a couple thousand bucks a month just on customer volume. Alone. This isn't one of those companies where you have to have like some regional director in your line specifically to hit the next rank it has nothing to do with that. And, and so any traditional builder who just can get volume will crush it here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So what else you got? Um, so yeah, I, okay. So the second thing is, and I think I've asked it before, okay. so like when I started though, um, I, you know, I did my pre-sales and then mm -hmm. I was able to buy the experience pack, but yeah. like in the back of my mind, I knew I needed to hit GoPro. Yeah. So I balanced it, you know, yeah. so I strategically sent some people to my site and then, you mm -hmm. know, it, the first few days I didn't tell people about my site and just talk about the five and 10 days because I needed to buy it. Exactly. So is that the best way to do it is to kind of like do both at the same time? Well, um, in terms good. of duplication, it'll be harder. That's, I know that's what I feel like. It, it will. Cause, cause you have that skill set. You understand you're trying to balance out cash flow and balance out when you hit that button for GoPro. Um, your personality and you having a business side previously, you could do that. Now, personally, would I recommend teaching it? I wouldn't. Now you can say it's an outlet. Um, I'm going to tell you for me, all of my people came at 928 or higher. Why? I just told them to do it. Like, I don't even give them an option. At, like, if you do the family pack, fantastic. But if you're looking to run a business, I don't even tell them, here's an option. I go, this is, this is what it is. If not, stay a customer, right? 
Now, in your situation, you had to be more creative. Um, but anytime you do that, it's going to be really hard five levels down. How do you teach that? Because you don't have as much influence over that person who's a complete stranger, right? Yeah. Now, you guys are like five levels down, but since we all kind of joined at the same time, it's a little easier for me to teach you this. Um, but when you start going, I'm already seven or eight levels deep. So I can see in like six months, I'm going to lose control of what's like duplicating. And, and I don't want them learning to pre-sell and then balance because most people are like Aunt Betty from Ohio. Who, who knows what she can do? Just yeah. buy the product and go sell it. Make your money back is an easier story to tell than having to pre-sell. Okay. Yeah. But I mean, we still use your story as an example, but I mean, I would say 95% of the people who joined me to make money, I tell them 928 or higher or just stay a customer. I just position it very straightforward. I'm here to help you make money. And, and a lot of it is because if they don't get that um, 200 servings or higher, they don't get 40% uh, commissions and they don't get rank five. Yeah. So what we're doing, and I think it's because in my like network of mm -hmm. people and Heather's too, like, mm -hmm. like the, where we came from before, mm -hmm. a lot of people are coming to us, even though we're like a little late to the like prove it game, not late, mm -hmm. but compared to our like little market. Um, one thing that we're leveraging is the like zero investment success story. Mm -hmm. And so people are coming to us because, uh, because other people aren't advertising like true. No, different angles always work. You just have to manage it properly. Okay. Um, so we have people stay customers, pr do pre-sales and I like that as a promoter. Like, literally, there's no way I'd even be here if I would have had to, if it wasn't for that. Money. Yeah. Like, single mom, like there's just no way. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. I mean, it, it is definitely an avenue that worked and Heather's proof that it would never have let her come in, the zero investment coming in. Um, just be careful with the freeloaders and just make sure you screen them properly. Because there's, here, it's like if someone gave you a car for free, you would take care of it. But if you had to pay for that car, you would take care of it even more. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's what, like, so is it different if they would sign up and then wait two weeks? like until their GoPro clock kicks in to buy their experience pack? Is it like a different perk of like buying it with that initial? There's no different perk per se. I just know from the literature, they kind of want it on the front end versus, you know, weeks in. Now there is a clause if you do 2000 volume. What I'm running into is like, I'm setting people up with the pre-sale stuff, but they really haven't paid the $37. So like in their mind, there's this option and they can prepay, but really like they're not committed. I feel like yep. until people pay that $37. So now I've had like three people just kind of like stop responding to me that were super gung ho. Well, they went mm -hmm. through my initial call where I was explaining pre-sale and GoPro and everything. And it was so overwhelming that now they're ghosted. Yeah. So I don't really want to continue offering the pre-sale um and to the people that i am i'm getting them signed up and just making sure they understand that like, they can get their square account and everything set up initially and be ready for business but the day they pay that 37 dollars, their ass better be working like yeah. for those two weeks until their clock ticks to have their experience pack pre-sold so to me that's like creating and cultivating a sense of working to a deadline, you know, and creating a sense of urgency. And instead of just being like, as soon as you get it pre-sold, then we'll sign you up. Like hard deadlines. Yeah. Definitely hard deadlines definitely help. So I, I like the fact that you're actually recognizing certain, certain aspects of your team and, and how that works. Yeah. So just think if that duplicated three levels down, could you continue? All right, take it. Could, could you continue? And just, just be, I mean, it is your audience. Your audience is very unique and there's a lot of people over there who, who need your help. And so having that as an avenue, but bear in mind, you don't want to put everyone in that same process because some of them do have the 928. Yeah. And it's just way easier at the 928. You have product and you did it. So you might have to just feel it out at that point. Um, but don't pigeonhole everyone into the, the 0% or the $0. Yeah, I think, yeah, I've been like torn because like I get what Heather says and I experience the same thing, but Lisa told me keep people as a customer until they're ready, until they do their pre-sales and can upgrade. Yeah. So I think That's what I'm doing. I keep them as a customer and I just keep dripping on them on the business and I keep showing them how many customers we're getting, how regular people are doing it. And then I go, when you're ready, we're going to start cranking 
and then at that point I treat them as a business owner. Yeah. yeah. Cause maybe it's better to have it to fall back on to do pre-sales, but like Heather said, like, you know, just like lead with 928. And then if they object, then like, obviously yeah. there's options. So in marketing, it's called a down sell. So you go for the straight offer. They're like, you know, I just don't really have it. And it's like, well, let's work on this. And you start brainstorming. You're like, okay, well, this is one option, but you don't lead with that option. And that's what I do. Right. Um, I have not downsold. Yeah. I mean, it's just a no brainer. Like people are going to, when you invest like a thousand dollars, I mean, you're going to definitely like you're committed and going to work. I don't know. I've sold a lot of stuff and people, I mean, I have people who bought $10,000 coaching and don't show up to 80% of it. It is, it's, it's who you attract and are they serious? It's, it's so, like a, I, this is you wow. guys. I know both of you know this, but I, yeah, like I had, and she's not doing it anymore. Um, so I can talk about it, but I had a promoter who bought an experience pack and then was asking me about returning it. And so I ended up, yeah, you know, so she spent a thousand dollars and didn't do anything with the business. And so I bought it back from her, thankfully, mm -hmm. but yeah, so you never know. You never know. Yeah. So just, you know, depending on your goals, just, just think duplication. Just if you, if you know we can duplicate, I'm fine with whatever you guys do because your niche is a little bit different. Um, but, but the goals are the same. People want to make money and we got to hit them rank five and 40% commission. Cause I think if they come in at 37, their, their 40% commission, I think they have to do it within 48 hours, not when they hit go pro. Right. That was my understanding. Yeah, I know that's what that's what you say, and that's what yeah. the chart says. But yeah. I didn't buy mine. Like I signed up June thirtieth, mm -hmm. and I bought my experience pack July thirteenth, and mm -hmm. I still got forty percent. Like I go. Okay. Now, was it the forty percent from the day you started or the day you bought? Maybe it was the day I bought it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's when it kicked in. Cause I know for me, it was the day I bought and then it expired and I started getting 20% after that. So okay, it was yeah. very clear. I'm not sure cause I did it the same day. So I'm not sure if it's the day you started or the day you bought, but. Cause I thought it was like start, come in with the experience pack or lose it. But I don't think it's like that. I think mm -hmm. it's like if you buy it within 14 days or maybe mm -hmm. whenever you buy it. Yeah. Maybe, maybe it's whenever. Cause I know as a, as a, as a customer, you can upgrade a promoter 37. I don't have that many. Maybe that's something you should take a look go into a $37 promoter, go into their back office under store, and then see the upgrade path of actually buying a promoter pack and, and seeing if it says, cause it'll tell you 40%, like you can buy this and you'll get 40% commission, you'll get rank five, it'll literally tell you in the details. Okay. And take a look at that. Um, um, yeah, another question I had is, do you know the minimum amount of money someone has to have in their wallet to set it up? I actually don't. Mm. Yeah, I don't know. I knew I had I had issues for the first week to kind of get selected, and I'm assuming that they're not going to want to pay you for the first two weeks, so they kind of drag their feet a little bit. Um, so don't rely on the wallet too much to pay someone back immediately. It took me like two weeks to get it set yeah, up. Yeah, me too, and most people that have said that to, as well. But I have one girl who's been a promoter a month. Still? I yeah, won't let her unlock it. She bought the experience pack. She has three customers. So I feel like she should have like yeah. in there to unlock it, but maybe we'll have to reach out to customer service. Yeah. Yeah. So she's, she's at the wallet side that I pay out and it's still not like syncing or something. Well, you know how when you first try to click on wallet, it says page not found. Like it's still mm -hmm. doing that. Oh uh, yeah. Yeah. That, that's more of a customer I thing. I didn't unlock until like I had gotten my first deposit like posted and it still didn't unlock until just this last one oh, weird. so i think maybe like Money. first weekly pay goes in because my first paycheck was actually my end of my month it was like my month for july mm -hmm. like 175 dollars that i still mm -hmm. don't have but mm -hmm. that's not until the 14th yeah and then last week just deposited yesterday Okay. Oh so, yeah, it does take a while. Like if you if none of it was unlocked, I couldn't use my prove it books or anything until after last week's pay period. Okay. And I think that's until your first um smart ship ships out is when you can use prove it books. 
Yeah. 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 Yours aren't locked yet? I haven't gotten my first smart ship, but I can still, I can use my prove it books. Oh. oh. All right. There you go. We'll figure it out. <laughs> yeah. So who knows? <laughs> I, I've been kicking a lot of people using coupons. Those definitely do work. Yes. Me too. So instead of a trial, I go straight to like, if I just give you 10 bucks, will you just buy a 15 day? I'm like, yes, I will. There you go. Yeah. Kick them off. I only give coupons to people if they're buying 30 days or more. Ah, I like that. <laughs> it's good. It's, you just, yeah. just, and I know Lisa is like, doesn't want to create a coupon culture, mm -hmm. culture, you know, for people. Mm -hmm. So it's like, yeah. Yeah. Just being resourceful. So, so GoPro, Go MVP. So you guys are looking to break MVPs yourself. That all-star is pretty significant. Um, and it's a really good rank to have uh, because the less people who hit it, the bigger the share you get. So you definitely want to start hitting it. Um, so your focus then is breaking GoPros and Go MVPs. Now, the thing is, if someone misses GoPro, they get all of those bonuses minus the $250 plus $100. They get that commission bump for life at MVP. Yeah. So yeah. we had two people who missed GoPro. They recovered at MVP, and they still got that commission bump. Um, so don't, don't give up people. We had two people do it the last day. They just... Yeah. finally woke up and did it so don't don't give up so that means you must know the last couple like days to a week and the volumes that they're short so you can help them get on the call and be creative with it okay so placement so heather how many do you have in your placement lounge let me look are those just your ps people like you're personally sponsored generally your ps yeah but they have to be uh promoters yeah. Yeah. And you can move them within 60 days of their start. So is that like under snapshot where it says total amount of promoters? Um, if you go to manage and then placement lounge, uh, upper right. And they'll give you the day they expire, right? Yeah. Okay. So what, what is your what is your closest one expiring? Um, forty days. Forty days. Okay, so that's plenty of time to run two pretty good contests. I mean, so the the the, the thinking is this: if this person is going to be your front line, you want to build onto this person for life, then you wouldn't move them, right? But if this is person that you know, thirty days, you kind of know if someone's serious or not. And if they're not, then you start to think about, okay, how do I leverage this one person to work with someone else and build their organization helping them, right? Now, if you have, let's say you have four people all in your placement lounge, you can have them all in the same chat and have them contest versus each other, right? You say, hey, have you four, I need to consolidate one of y'all under each other, the person who generates five customers first, or if some volume number you're trying to hit, you can then place one under the other and you'll have three placement people you can move at that time. You see what I'm saying? Because I mean, you kind of need the extra time to kind of like be moving people in groups and then eventually you move them all. And then you only have two or three or four, well, two or three, let's just two or three direct legs you're building under. I'm building two. Just so, just so you're very focused on that. So you have 40 days, your first one of the basic contests is five customers. So I would go to all of my promoters and go, Hey, look, within, you know, five days, anyone, the first person or anyone who can generate this up to, let's say no more than three winners. If you can generate five personal customers that build within this time frame, I will generate a prover for you and, and move in your organization. So you're generating placement and volume based off moving one piece. Now, if you do this right, it doesn't all have to come from you. It can come from someone in your team. So like Alexis has Heather in your team. Alexis doesn't have to make that placement. Heather has the availability to make that placement because you have the extra people to move. Okay. Yeah. You're saying I could move someone not under Heather, but under one of her people to help her. <laughs> well, well, the thing is, let's say, let's say Alexis has three people, Heather has seven, right? You can go to the entire organization under Alexis and go, I have three, but then go under Heather's and say, I have seven. 
You see what I'm saying? Because you can definitely move your your overflow, Alexis, into Heather's organization, but at least it's there and people can see that it's available. You see what I'm saying? But then placements, it doesn't have to come from Alexis waiting room. It can come or your placement lounge. It can come from anywhere. Like you, you need to be looking into your organizations and kind of helping them move. But before they make that move, you're running a contest before you make the move. Because every move should increase your team by a couple customers or at least last. So I, so I was in the very beginning, we're talking about a more difficult contest, easier and then easiest. So if I have one, like let's say two, three days left and I know I want to place in Heather's organization, I will go to Heather and then have her write a contest for her entire team. I go, the first person who signs up at 928, 200 servings um, from today until tomorrow, I will place your approver. Because I already knew I wanted a placement under Heather, but who would get it? So I'm running like a one-for-one one at that time. So the more contests you can run into smaller and tighter organizations, you can take one prover to get five customers and then one prover. And then you just increase, like 10x your volume based off of one piece that you're moving. And it doesn't have to be in Alexis. It can be in Heather's. It can be in mine. It can be in Hillary's. It can be in Cody's. It can be, there's tons so you just kind of ask up, like, hey, Hillary, how many do you have left over do you want to dedicate to my organization? Stuff like that, right? Now, the reason I, I make these contests with the MVPs is like, I just want to know who can win it. And it's really y'all's choice to go after it or not, right? But if I know I want to dedicate something into the organization, if you hit it, I'm going to pay it. If you don't, then I just go, okay, well, let me just see under your organization who's really actively running and then I'll place that placement down. So you don't have to sponsor a bunch of people to make this really work, but the one piece that you do, you want to get about four or five, 10 X volume from that one placement. Customer volume is fine. Yeah. Cool. All right. So any last questions? No. We're good. Okay. So for you guys run into R five at the end of the year, end of the year is a must because it's your one year cycle. Just remember, Rank five pays you for an entire year. So you guys trying to get to rank five or you helping hit rank five means nothing because you're paid rank five for an entire year. Okay. So your actual goal is rank six by the end of the year, which is, which is 30,000 totally doable. But if you make these placements strategically, you can definitely five and 10 extra volume with customers. So if you have questions, if you're like, Hey, I'm thinking about doing this, screenshot it, write me a little bio and I'll read it and I'll run it off you and see if it's, I mean, not to say if you can listen to me or not, but I'll give you some suggestions if you can kind of like really uh, build that more, a little more efficiently. But I think Alexis, you did great for your first two placements. I, I, I liked it. Um, just because once you place it, it's done. Yeah. You can't do anything. But so like, if you have it, if you have this winning, like you have this thing and right before you move it, I will go talk to three people of y'all three. Who would be the first one to bring one more prover or two more customers? I'll give it to you. Because, I mean, they're all the same to you anyways until they actually produce. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Sweet. Okay. Well, cool. So, if, 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 if uh, I think Danielle was looking for something, if there's any other questions, we can definitely come back on this. But if I can help you guys just kind of focus on that, GoPro, Go MVP, and making those placements right. And just remember, every month it does flush, but it, you have to get those customers. Just, and I think y'all's customers are very good. So then the next phase is, can you get your customers for your product? Because if you can, you get paid on all that volume. You would double your volume with free customers. All right? Okay. Cool, 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 cool. All right. Well, thank